I want you to think about your last goal that you have set for yourself. Did you achieve that goal? Or did it never happen? Not yet. Not too bad. Two years ago, I had a goal. I wanted to become a better presenter, a better speaker. So I signed up to give a talk. I had two months of preparation, and in the end, that talk never happened. Because it got cancelled. Cancelled by my glorious self. I made the decision to run away from my own fear to speak in front of people. And I felt really bad about that. Until I found out, it's not just my own fear. Speech anxiety applies to 75% of all people. Welcome, almost everyone. This made me feel not that bad anymore. And two other great things happened after my cancellation. First, I discovered an interesting tool known as empowerment evaluation that can help you to overcome the famous obstacles of speaking in public. And second, I came up with a new goal. I wanted to know how speaking works. I knew I need to build a new skill first before I ever get on stage again. The good news is, since it is a skill, we can all learn it. We just need the right approach to get there. And here comes the empowerment evaluation to play. It is a tool to monitor and evaluate your own progress and development towards that. So this helped me tremendously and many other people in Rajasthan before. For example, it has been used at Stanford School of Medicine to transform its entire curriculum. It was used for a $50 million project by Hewlett Packard called Digital Village to improve the inclusion of Native American tribes into society. And for a tobacco prevention project in Arkansas to keep kids away from tobacco with a social and financial ROI of 84 or you take the entire substance of an empowerment evaluation and bring it into the field of speaking to improve your skills on stage. Now these are just some cases where an empowerment evaluation led to great results. So let's see what we will have within the next 15 minutes. First, we will quickly jump into the main definition of an empowerment evaluation. Then we need to understand the theoretical background behind it which is super interesting because it will explain some parts of our human behavior. Then we have a look at the main tool with its most important principles, and from there we jump into the actual three steps of application and how you can use it to become a better speaker, or if you have any other current goal, feel free to use it there. The concept of an empowerment evaluation was developed in 1993 by Professor David Fetterman at Stanford University. According to his definition, an empowerment evaluation is all about improvement and self-determination. By the use of evaluation concepts, techniques, and findings. Now to get more clarity about this pretty generic definition, we first need to cover how we beautiful humans behave. Because how we behave inspired the concept of an empowerment evaluation. Ooh, talking about human behavior, I want to share a little insight of my behavior. Too many times in my life, I learned something new. And I said, yeah, this is exactly what I'm going to do. And in the end, I never did it. And I asked myself, Benjamin, just think about what you have missed in life already, because you never did it. It made me think, sad, and angry. Okay, before I get too emotional, <laughs> let's start with a really simple example and see what researchers say about that. This is Thomas. Thomas is a manager working for a big company, and he just went through one of those famous trainings on leadership skills. One of the things he learned in this training is conflict management. If you ask Thomas, how would you manage a conflict? Thomas has the right answer and he says, well, first I will listen and then I will facilitate a discussion. However, some days later, there is an actual conflict in Thomas' team that he needs to solve. For some reason, Thomas now manages the entire situation completely differently. 
by the use of formal authority and power without any encouragement of discussion. The question is, why does this happen to Thomas? And the story is not very unusual because we do not behave as we intend to most often. In fact, researchers say that our behavior has two components. Behavioral knowledge on the one side and behavioral practice on the other side. Now what does it mean? When Thomas is asked how to behave in a conflict situation, he has behavioral knowledge. I will listen and I will facilitate a discussion. However, when it comes to the real conflict, his main actions are different and that describes his behavior practice. The use of formal authority and power. Now the mismatch we have here does not necessarily say that Thomas is intentionally dishonest. Rather it means he's not aware of his real life action. I want to say it again, it happens to all of us every day. Now let's get back to the improvements as a speaker or the goal you currently have. If we want to achieve something more effectively, we need to align our behavior in terms of our knowledge our practice. Now do you see the common sense and do you think this is so banal? Yes it is. Somehow it's still not easy. You might have heard this statement before, before we get really into the cliché stuff off the top. Sometimes there's a massive gap in this statement between what we say we do and what we actually do. And exactly here comes the empowerment evaluation to play to help you close that gap. And before we jump into the main process with its three steps, we need to cover the most important principles by which the entire evaluation unfolds. And for that, we create a little flower with just three leaves. And the first leaf is my favorite. The critical friend. Now what is a critical friend? It is true friendship. The concept of a critical friend originated in educational research. It is someone who gives you harsh, because this is where the development happens. Now imagine the following situation. You have a presentation coming up. You prepare the presentation, practice over and over again until you feel really confident to deliver it. However, in that process of preparation, you never had someone who gave you an outside perspective of what you do. Until the day of presentation arrives and you realize Ooh. I lost my audience and I failed my message. Now that critical friend will help you as a trusted person, someone who asks you provocative questions and offers critique as for your work as a friend. And this is so important. Ideally, this friend has a higher level of expertise in your field. And this brings us to the second leaf. Mm, second reason. We've heard this before, ownership. It may sound a bit abstract and cliche, but ownership of your own performance is a crucial part for your development. It means becoming aware of our real life behavior, including the mistakes we make. Now, do you remember Thomas, the manager? He did not own his performance when it came to dealing with that conflict. Even though he had the right intention with his knowledge, he was not aware of his main actions. Now, the interesting part comes in of the empowerment evaluation. What will happen if we would have asked Thomas to assess his own performance? Two great things. First, Thomas will understand that his behavior is different according to his knowledge about the situation. And second, he will get in charge. And then he will be able to change his behavior. And now you might wonder, what is the role of the critical friend here? 
The critical thread is important for you to exactly gain that ownership of your actions because it will help you to assess your performance and might question your perspective. All right, critical thread and ownership. The third leap is where the magic happens data. In the process of an empowerment evaluation, you create data by the use of a worksheet, which can be a simple table like this one. And this is how it works. First, you list all your activities that you need to achieve your goals. Second, you choose a certain time frame for your activities to work on. For example, days, weeks, months, some seconds for most people. And then you start writing your activities on that time frame and on a specific scale that fits the context and the purpose. In this case, we have a scale from one to five. One means you're in a developing state. Two equals you can taste the development already as it emerges. Three, you have the first feeling of accomplishment, which is by far not enough. Because from there you start to excel your skills, which is number four, to eventually reach level of excellence, which is number five. And you might have heard my favorite quote by William Durant. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act. It is a habit. And this applies beautifully to an empowerment evaluation because it will help you to create that habit. And the data gives you the evidence of where you are. Now let's move from the three principles into the actual three steps of an empowerment evaluation so that you can use it for yourself. The first step starts with one simple thing. Your desire to change something. What is that thing we are trying to reach and accomplish? That is the mission. The second step is we need to take an honest stock of our current position. Where are we right now in terms of that mission? It can be painful sometimes. And most evaluations just finish step number two by assessing status quo, trained and left alone. An empowerment evaluation takes a third step into account and that is planning for the future. Now what does planning for the future mean? You will monitor and reflect your entire development. And this is it. This is all what we need to know. The three principles and the three steps. And now we can take that to become a better speaker. So let's go back two years ago. And I canceled my speech. At that time, I had no critical friend. I had no sense of ownership when it came to speaking. And I didn't even know that I could use data to improve myself. Now one day, I had a deep self-talk. And I said to myself, start. And that's what I did. Another six months after my cancellation, I went on stage and I bombed it. I failed my speech. And that was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Now luckily, I spoke in front of people that were all willing to help me. And once I was done, I did not only have one critical friend, it was an entire community. And that was so beautiful. Now my failure made me really ambitious to learn more about speaking. When I found out, I need a structure. I need a system that can help me in my development. And I found the power of an empowerment evaluation. I started implementing it and it worked. So let's see how my data looked like. I set up a table and I asked myself, what do I need to know about speaking to improve myself on stage? And I came up with knowledge about speaking. I need platforms where I can speak. And my experience is really important, which will revise my knowledge. Now the second step is taking the honest stock of my position. When I started, I had nothing in terms of knowledge. I didn't speak on any platform. No experience at all, three times zero. That's not even on the scale, but a great stock to start with. Because from there, we start planning for the future. And before we do that, we need to prioritize that one activity 
which is most important to start with. Otherwise, it might be too much and complex, and we have a reason to give up. So I prioritized knowledge about speaking. I took that, I broke it down into its components, and I started educating myself. What do I need to know about the use of the stage, my voice, my body, etc. From there you start taking interventions and you increase your rating on your scale, moving from a zero to a one, a two, etc. The enlightening moment comes in when you take another stock of your original worksheet, of your main goals. And this is how it looked for me after four months. In the meanwhile, I've gained a solid knowledge about speaking. But when it comes to speaking on different platforms and growing my experience, I'm still far away from what I want to achieve. Just the knowledge won't make it any better. Now do you see the powerful moment here? You clearly see all your deficits without getting lost in them. And when you remember the principle of ownership, you will become a lot more conscious throughout the entire process of going back and forth to see where you are in your development. And don't worry about being too generous on your rating, you still have that pretty good friend, lucky me, a community, that might question your expertise. What can we do when we start planning for the future from this stock? Growing the platforms. Well, go online, do some research about speaking events. There are so many these days, and sign up for a 15 by 4 event. Mm -hmm. This is the truth how I got here. And you cannot imagine how grateful I am for this opportunity. At the same time, I can share something that is hopefully helpful for as many people in the audience, since I believe this tool is simple and banal and will bring you great results in many other fields if you have the courage to use it. And I would be super curious, what do you think about an empowerment evaluation and how could that work in an entrepreneurship? I think there are many in the audience who are living a healthier life once you need to work out a little bit more. And so, what's there? Just pick one and try if it works for you. To wrap it up, it is a simple model. You kick off with a desired outcome. You go into the process with a critical friend, you take that ownership, and you reflect on your data until you have achieved your desired outcome. Now this being said, I honestly believe my speech won't change, but an empowerment evaluation will. And if you want to do me a favor, give me some critical feedback and some critical questions after this talk. Show up, do your thing, and try. Thank you. you need 
to get a little bit more of a performance in your in your daily thing. You're talking about this and what are the activities? Okay, cool. Yeah, what do you need for a healthy life? Think about it. Yeah, you need to sleep, good diet. You need to work out. Break it down what you have there and track yourself. And you might get a buddy who kicks you out of bed 6 a.m. in the morning to get that workout in before you go to the office and sit the whole day. And in the evening, Netflix is good. <laughs> so the, the thing is about them activities, this is not a quick fix. I had so many, like I tried improv theater, people said, well, try this one. It didn't work for me. I started writing because I know when I can write, I can speak a little bit better, so I incorporated that. So there are activities going back and forth. There's one more question on this side. Okay. Thanks for your talk, excellent talk. Uh, I have just heard that, that to get excellent, you need like around 10,000 hours to do something. <laughs> so, do you believe in it? What are your thoughts on that? Yes. <laughs> you know, people just say it. I, I think there are shortcuts. It, it depends. Like, from my personal belief, we all born with a certain constitution and we have a call to do something. And I don't need always 10,000 or 100 million hours to get where I want to go. I just need to know what I want to do and I can skip a big part of that. So it's a common thing, people will say it as an excuse. I believe in a power manipulation and not in 10,000 hours. Uh, hope this answers the question. Okay, uh, one question on this side. Yes. Yes. Um, how do you hear about breaking down uh, your goals? Because I think that's the hardest thing out of the whole thing. If you're making it sound pretty easy. <laughs> the question was how do you break down your goals? How do I break them down or how do I find them? Both. Both. <laughs> okay. I think you can. So, this is again a personal approach. I do a lot of tasting. I try different stuff. I'm not this type of guy, so I rejected my first job offer, I didn't want it. Because I'm too young, I want to feel alive and I try so much. And whenever there is a field where I feel a lot of energy and enthusiasm, I will stay there. And if not, I keep moving. So this is where I feel like home a little bit, and then the work starts. And then I break it down, what do I need to do? Um, does this answer the question? Uh, yeah, but how do you find the right balance? Because I think most people break it down uh, to think of a chunk. Oh, yeah, yeah. Break it down, like prioritize. Prioritize, like what I said, I want to become a better speaker. It's not about getting on stage and start talking. It starts way in the back. And this is the thing, when people see someone on the stage, hmm, he has talent. No, it is hard work. And this is it doesn't matter if you want to become a speaker or you want to build your own business, you want to live a healthy life. It is work in the background and that's what we do not want to hear. So break that down and prioritize that one thing and do that one thing over a certain time of time frame when you think, hmm, I can move on. And whenever you feel stuck, this was my point, I said, I have so much knowledge, but I'm stuck, I'm not speaking. I need to do something else. And I said, I have no platform. Okay, I think time for one more question. One more question. Excuse me. Can I, can I ask a question? No? Yeah. <laughs> my, my question is about objectivity. So where do you get it? Because it sounds quite subjective, to be honest. Um, about a critical friend, because he's still a friend, she's still a friend. And uh, the way you evaluate yourself, it's kind of like self-tracking. So isn't it a bit subjective? So from where do you get this uh, objectivity part, where you can actually rely on those foundations together. I love the question, I hope someone will ask that. Can you repeat it? Um, so you talk about bias, I guess. Cool. There is always some bias because I ask myself the same question, what is an empowered outcome? And that's bias. I looked into research and there is empirical evidence that this approach can bring empowered outcome. I have some numbers in the pocket. If someone is interested, I can forward this uh, paper from the American Evaluation Journal. It is quite interesting, but the critique is, of course, the discussion 
how do you bring an, an empowered outcome on the paper? And personally, talking is, it is a feeling. And there is a lot of stuff out there. There's an American Evaluation Association. They run conferences about this stuff and they discuss how can we minimize this bias. And this is a true thing. Yeah. Does this answer some of the question? I mean, it is a tool, and in the end, it can work for you or not. And uh, research and the previous stuff is a different thing, but yeah. Subjective and objective. If you well, I'll talk to you later. Question. Yes, that's what I just wanted to say. Speakers are still here, so you can stay and ask once more, like just from face to face. Thank you very much.